Hi, in this class, we are going to learn how to animate a manga panel into an actual anime. In our previous class, we learned how to set up Flip Studio Paint for Genga work. We are going to build on top of that in this class. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to know how to do a rough animation, how to choose dynamic poses, how to clean up your Genga, how to properly color your Genga, and last but not least, how to composite your finished animation in Flip Studio Paint. Let's get started. When choosing your manga, it is important to choose dynamic camera angles. This could be high angles, low angles, or tilted angles. In our case, I chose a high tilted angle with a little bit of fish eye perspective. Avoid flat compositions where you can. A good place to find Genga reference is X, formerly Twitter. When you are doing your rough animation, it is important to capture the intention of the pose. I generally start with a rough mannequin and layer a rough sketch on top of it. Please note sometimes you need at least 4 rough passes in order to get the character on model. Yet easier with time. When coloring your Genga, there are a set of color schemes you need to use, especially if you are working with a team. Generally, we have two types solid lines and color fields. For solid lines, black is for line work, blue for shadows, red for highlights, and green for secondary shadows. The other set is for shading. These are light brown for skin shadows, pale blue for clothes shadows, pink for hair shadows, pale green for secondary shadows, dark green for areas that are to be filled with a solid black, yellow for highlights, and a pale light yellow for cell shading. Remember, these colors can vary from one studio to another. So choose what will work best for you. When you are done shading your Genga, it's time for cleaner. We generally use anti-aliased brush with no opacity. In Clip Studio Paint, select your brush, anti-aliased option to the first option, and stabilization at around 45 or so. We use anti-aliased brush so that it can be easy to fill in the colors during cell shading. With solid lines complete, it's time to add color separation lines. Blue for shadows, red for highlights, and green for secondary shadows. The 
red X markings are used to help you identify negative shapes. These are empty spaces that are not part of the character. It will help you avoid filling in these empty spaces during coloring. Next, let us use the bucket fill to color in these colors. We will first begin with normal colors, then finish with the shading. Make sure the layer you are coloring on is below all the other layers. When bucket filling, the above layers will be used to mark boundaries of where each color should go. Make sure your lines are touching or use the close gap tool. To make coloring easier, you can import your reference in the subview. Go to Window, then activate Subview. You can then import your reference in the subview and use the eyedropper to pick colors. It's much easier. Click on switch to eyedropper automatically. This, is, this will automatically switch to eyedropper tool whenever you hover on top of the subject. With normal colors done, it's time to fill in the shading. Drag the flat color layer right on top of the blue separation line layer. Set the blue separation line as a draft layer and fill in all the parts that are demarcated by the blue separation line. After you are done, set the red separation line as a draft layer and fill in all the highlights colors. Repeat the process for the green separation line. After you are done coloring, check if there are unpainted pixels. Set the animation folder to black so that unpainted pixels can be visible. While selected on the animation folder, go to change layer color and set it to black. Set the eyedropper tool to pick from the selected layer to avoid picking the black tones. Use the lasso fill tool or the paint fill tool to paint over the painted pixels. Turn off the layer colorize tool when you are done. In order to smoothen the blocky anti aliased line, copy the folder A1 by dragging it upwards while holding Alt. Match the layer and hide the copy. Go to Filter, Blur, then Smoothing. And there you have it. In the next lesson, I will show you how you can add more frames so that there can be motion. Thank you for watching.